I, I, I think in the last 10 years, I've been seeing a genuine, a genuine move towards something that feels more like an engineering discipline and less like craftsmanship, if I'm honest, craftspersonship. I, I, I think that we are, um, you know, we've got some tools that we know work and, we, and when we wield them, we get better results. Uh, and and that's that's what you'd expect from engineering. It's it's not it's not proof. It's not going to give you a you know a guarantee of success, but it's going to improve your chances of success markedly. You know, yeah. if, you, if you're using the right tools. Uh, and, yeah. and I don't I don't mean that in sen- in the sense of compilers. I mean in the sense of these ideas like, like you know like the Dora metrics and so on. Yeah, and all the and all the all the techniques associated with continuous delivery and. Yeah. We didn't even talk about this and we shouldn't because we were running out of time, but like transformational leadership and like culture. Cause like, it's yeah. not just about technical practices. It's about, Oh, by the way, <laughs> teams have to be able to say the truth, you know, speak truth to power and like, absolutely other people's opinions. And I mean, w- yes, I mean, 100%, but like, I, I know, you know this, but just, I think the people that, you know, are maybe new to this industry that are just kind of experiencing this now, it's like, Oh, this is obvious. Well, it was obvious that these techniques were good things. We yes. had no proof until Dr. Forskin's work that yes. they were. We had anecdotal evidence, but 40 years of research into pre, <laughs> pre Nicole, 40 yeah. years of research into software delivery and, and like nobody could find any, um, she says this, like nobody could find any correlation or causal, causal relationship between the various kinds of investments and, and engineering outcomes. And she yes. was able to, you know, she and everybody involved in the state of DevOps uh, surveys were able to figure out a way to, um, you know, f- uh, separate it. And like, that's the, that's the absolute brilliance that like stepped the entire industry up. So um, I'm 100% agreeing with you that I think now we are on a much more scientific slash engineering footing as an yes. industry. Uh, and I, I don't say this lightly, like it's Nicole. She brought us here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Showed us the way. Um, and I, again, like I say, I think we should be all incredibly grateful for that uh, because now, oh, survey methodologies and science actually works as applied to, as applied to software yeah. as we hoped, but couldn't figure out for four decades. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I, I, as you say, for, for, for people that are kind of relatively new to the industry i i can i can very well, I, i'm fairly sure he's written it down but i can remember having conversations with martin fowler and he, and he was saying it's not possible to measure software teams i think we all thought that i think we all believed I, that i did too because yeah. there were all these not because we didn't know that there were practices that worked better yeah. or worse we knew that but we couldn't prove it because we didn't have an output we didn't have actually we didn't have outcome metrics yes or even outcome well, we, all we had was output metrics. All we yes. had were lines of code and function yes. points and like all the like deeply gameable, horrible uh, metrics that measure actually nothing. Yes. Um, and what uh, the beauty of this research is they were, she and the research group were able to find those engineering outcomes distinct from the customer outcomes. So we were like, how do you yes. measure team? Did you satisfy the customer? And like, I yes. still believe. But yes. we were like, there's nothing in between the practice, the stuff that we do, and there's no in, in between measurement that we believe, right? Between yes. stuff that we do, <laughs> inputs that we put into you know our team and our process, and outcomes that we get in terms of customer satisfaction. But what she's shown, and again, that causal relationship among all those things, the brilliance is these engineering outcomes, as measured by the four the four metrics that we talked about. Yeah. That isn't. These are my words. Some an interim step where we can, and sometimes proxy metrics, and I mean that in a good way, mm-hmm. proxy metrics that we can work in tight feedback loops toward improving those, yes. improving failure rate, improving our deployment time, improving our lead time. And the research shows that if we do that, we are guaranteed. There is a causal relationship yes. <laughs> between making improvements to those engineering outcomes and the real customer outcomes that we that we care about. And yeah. I love that. You, that you quote all the time, which I'm now starting to do, which is the teams that do really very well on these things are, do 44% more real work, like 44% work on yeah. features, work on features as opposed to maintenance or bug fixes or something like that. And again, I know you know this, but like the research shows 
uh, that, uh, you know, the, the organizations that do this have better productivity, better profitability, better market share. Yeah. Um, and you need only think of the engineering organizations that you like admire <laughs> out in the world, you know, yeah. again, the Amazons, the Googles, the Netflixes, et cetera, of the, of the world. Um, and they're the one, I mean, <laughs> that they're, they're proof points about like, um, yeah. investing in, investing in platforms, investing in these techniques, actually doing these practices for serious, um, they make a big difference. So, yeah, it, it, it's huge. I, 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 you, you say, you saying about them being kind of proxy metrics and, and they are, but they're proxies for things that really matter. You know, the, the, the you know, stability measures the quality of the work that we produce throughput measures the efficiency with which we can deliver work of that quality that those are things that matter to everybody you know whatever yeah. it is that they're building so 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 they're hot they're difficult to gain they're not the real value I, i'm I, i've been reviewing a book I, i'm writing a foreword for a book that's written by a friend of mine um, about sre uh, and the adoption of sre in a, a non-google big environment um and um, I, I think that might be the other part. That, that that might give you the framework for that other set of metrics in terms of you know I'm building this feature. What are the object? What are the indicators that I need to monitor in order in order to be able to determine whether the service is good? The kind of you know, your canary you know measure or whatever else, or take sure. that further. And what level of objectivism am I setting for this? For this thing on that measure and using those as tools to get to more kind of hypothesis driven development and apply that engineering just a little bit further in terms of testing the customer impact as well as the technical measures i think i think most people think about sre in terms of you know uptime and all that kind of stuff which is fine but i see no reason why you can't apply the same thinking to does it make my customer trade more or whatever else oh, yeah 100 percent. and again there's a whole nother podcast in this conversation but just to quickly 100 percent agree and underline all the things that you say uh yeah sr i mean people might think that sre is about only uptime and availability um i respectfully you're wrong <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> like, I, uh, yeah i know I, yeah. I know you know that i know you know that <laughs> yeah. but that's way too simplistic i mean again yeah. SRE is an engineering discipline as applied to all aspects of reliability and system performance, et cetera. I know you know that. Um, and so the service level objectives that are that, that bring together those things, how do I express in quantitative ways the, a good customer experience? And like, yeah. that's hard. Like you actually have to use your brain and, and yeah, think yeah. about it. You know, like, oh, going through this, uh, we're actually implementing a bunch of these things at, at eBay right now, early days, but like, it looks yeah. great. Um, uh, how long does it take for a customer to, you know, get through this checkout flow? Yeah. Uh, you know, all those, you know, all those seemingly technical measures um, do actually measure when done properly. Uh, we can actually measure aspects of the customer experience, uh, whether it's error or performance or whatever, um, that really matter. Um, yeah, as a hint to your reader. So I also am doing a blurb, not a foreword for Vlad's book. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's exactly, I know. Uh, and when that comes out, um, I'm going to be strongly recommending it. It is just tremendous, tremendous. Yes. This book on implementing, implementing SRE. So that when that is out, um, we'll, be, we'll be talking about that one too.